Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the showdown between Slaanesh and Korn. It's going to be the Herald of Korn facing off against the Cultists of Korn. So yes, indeed, you can bring heroes as your lord in this game mode, as long as you bring your main lord in reinforcements. So Slaanesh is pretty crazy in domination mode. They certainly bring quite a bit to the table. Now, the reason why is because of their mobility. Looking at all these Slaanesh units, they have like 100 speed across the board. Even their infantry, which are, you know, I guess a slower unit on the roster, rocking 54 speed. Now, they are the definition of glass cannon. You have the speed, you have the high damage output, but you will buckle and fold like a piece of paper if you're not careful. A very high micro faction. I do think that if Slaanesh is in the hands of like super high level tournament players, they're going to be unholy. But for newer players, they might be a little bit tricky for sure. Now, their main ability, of course, well, these guys have Soul Hunter, which is really cool. So as they get more kills, they actually get damage resist, leadership, and charge bonus. But the Devastating Flanker is the ability I want to show you. I believe the Exalted Demonettes do have it, yes. So when they get a charge on the side or back of something, it actually doubles their charge bonus. So this applies to most of their cavalry as well. But these guys also have Soul Scent. So the effect increases by, I believe, each unit nearby that is wavering or has low morale. So very, very cool abilities on the Slanesh roster. So we have a couple of Hellstriders, which are the anti-large, looking to deal with the corn dogs because corn has great flesh hounds, and the Hellstriders are an excellent counter against them. And I do also have Seekers of Slanesh. Seekers of Slanesh are the 1,000 gold cavalry unit, and they have a ton of armor piercing and devastating flanker and poison. They are really, really good. Now, I didn't go for a big fancy lord. I wanted to use the chariot character because I just felt like it would be really good with Pendulum and also being able to summon the uh, Portal Glyph, which summons Furies. Now, Slanesh Furies actually have armor piercing, which makes them very, very good against corn. However, you're paying for the armor piercing, so Corn Furies actually defeat Slanesh Furies. So you have to use them with a little bit of a kind of grace there. Now, for the Coronate Army, it is going to be a Skull Cannon backed up by a Cultist of Corn. We do have a couple Furies up in the sky, Flesh Hounds, Double Chaos Warrior, and I do like this choice. I think the Halberds, like these guys hit so hard against Light Armor, and their attack rate is better than the Halberds. I don't think the Halberd is worth it in this matchup. I think the dual weapon is the correct way to go. So I really like this choice from the Coronate Army. I also like the option of the cheap Cultist Lord because it allows Corn to bring a lot more to the battlefield, which makes it much harder to kind of swarm and zerg them here. So the Coronate Forces, as well as the Chaos Furies, kind of bouncing around up in the sky, just cackling and enjoying themselves. And the Coronate Warriors are going to be moving up on the objective. I do like the faster units or slower units being brought in the initial army for Corn, and then summoning in like demons and faster units and reserves, because it does take time to get up to the objective. You can see it's almost a full minute. For these Chaos Warriors marching straight to the objective from when the fighting started. With the 28 speed, it's really, really a big factor, right? So for me and Slanesh here, we're basically just going to be making sure that I do not get kind of a caught in a big grindy head-on fight. Because Corrin is way better at that. I need to take the two objectives, or at least threaten to take the two objectives on the side. So Corrin is going to kind of fan out, and then I can take advantage of my mobility here. So what I really wanted to do was get a pendulum off. So the Herald of Corrin here on the, uh, oh my god, look at the lawnmower thing. It's going to be kind of drifting down here, looking to maybe get a pendulum on some of these Chaos Warriors. But with the Cultists here and the Skull Cannon kind of fending me back, I have to be very careful. So once again, just rotating a little bit, we can do some fast forwarding while we both kind of jockey and posture for position. I do summon in some Heart Seekers of Slanesh. Now these guys are really cool. These are like the more elite cavalry for Slanesh. They do cost 1400, but they do have the Devastating Flanker and the Soul Scent. So as they tank the leadership of units, they get even more crazy. And this is really good. Uh, Slanesh, the Lore of Magic, does indeed have a couple of leadership tanking effects and just surrounding people in general will lead to you getting your army ability super, super quickly. So down here, we have our Exalted Demonettes. I was hoping to like isolate something with them. The Exalted Demonettes will absolutely tear apart whatever they fight. They'll have the Charmed ability to lower their melee attack, huge armor piercing. I think Corn Dual Weapon Warriors would actually trade upward into that fight, but if I'm able to kind of flank and double my charge bonus, then suddenly the Coronate Warriors are going to be getting uh, done from behind and certainly not uh, not going too well for them. So the Exalted Demonettes of Slanesh kind of creeping around, trying to get us around on his army. You can see Slanesh really likes to get his ambushes. Obviously, he could summon in reinforcements, but with my mobility, if I can cut off his supply lines, it's actually quite good. So it really looks like a, quite a thematic surround here. As the Seeker Chariots are going to be moving in, preparing for the big fight of fights, Hellstriders of Slanesh are here. Demonettes are going to be coming up and around the top, and we are going to be getting a big pitched fight here in just a hot second. So once again, the Coronate Warriors... Forming a Helm's Deep, they have a nice choke point. This map certainly has some good tools for them to defend themselves. And in terms of banked resources, unfortunately, with the current Spectator UI replay UI, you can only see mine, but hopefully that'll be something they do fix down the road. Some more Hellstriders coming in, and it uh, looks like his two Furies might be going after my Hellstriders back here, which is a smart choice because they're infantry sized. So my anti large cavalry will get wrecked pretty bad by his Furies, actually. So he does summon in a Bloodthirster, or Scarbrand the Exiled. So he brought his main lord, and then uh, into he didn't bring it, and then he saved up and brought it. Now, Scarbrand is hands down the best choice against Slanesh because he has a Rampage ability, so it's, it stops him from cycle charging if he's able to get in there. So right now, Scarbrand does get in with the Steel Chair, gets the four kills, and immediately his weapon strength is already stronger because of Slaughter and Carnage. Scarbrand is just like the coolest character ever. 
But a big fight's about to go down here. We are going in for the kill. The Hellstriders of Slanesh charging into the Chaos Cultists of Corn, as well as the uh, Chaos Warriors. And we're just getting that big, big pit fight coming. Demonettes charged in. We did get the Pendulum on the Chaos Warriors. And we do hit them on the side, so the charge bonus actually will be doubled. It's pretty crazy. It doesn't actually show it in the charge bonus, but it does in terms of combat. And the Demonettes should be doing pretty good. Now, we have a head-on fight, which isn't great for me, but I did get two surrounds. Here, I was able to surround these warriors, so the devastating charge from the Heart Seekers, which are doing so much damage against the Cornate Warriors. You can see these dual weapon warriors, and their armor is just folding like a piece of paper. Look how quickly they die to the Heart Seekers with a double charge bonus. Also, over here, we do some pretty good work. We actually take out another expensive unit, and the Demonettes of Slanesh are now ripping up the Chaos Furies of Corn, and they're getting better stats because of the tanking leadership. Now, as far as this fight goes, it's a little bit messy. Scarbrand gets a big rampage. Beautiful play here by my, by my opponent. It rampages all my units, and this is just going to be brutal, brutal damage for the Blood God as they continue to cleave through my Seekers. Rage Embodied is so strong, but I out-traded on the flanks. I killed two Chaos Warriors like outright and did some good damage here, but I did take some big casualties of my own. Overall, I would say the trading was relatively even, and uh, that was a, a good Royal Rumble. Now, Scarbrand is up to 649 on his weapon strength. That is his new permanent stat, and he is poisoned at the moment. So when the poison wears off, you'll see his true damage, which should be close to 700, I think. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, 741. So another Pendulum going down on those uh, those Corn Warriors. Did a little bit of damage, nothing too crazy. And now he's trying to reinforce the points. I do have a two capture on him, I think, or actually one capture. So I have number one. And number three, I started to capture, but I didn't want to get him get a huge lead on him points-wise, because if I did that, he would get bonus resources. So I wanted to focus a little bit more on the fighting. And let me tell you guys, Slanesh, their main tactic in this game mode really is to grind for value before they play the objective game, because they're so good at alpha striking people. Now, Demonette's looking for a fight. The Corn Warriors with the dual weapons do get a good charge again against them, so I'm going to be taking a little bit of punishment here as some of the Heart Seekers do move in to fight. Demonette's not going to be super good in sustained combat versus Corn Dogs, and here the Skull Cannon comes, as well as the Cultus of Corn. But the back objective, I'm still not trying to capture it. I think I was just kind of rotating about. So again, I have the speed, right? I don't need to stand here and fight. So the Demonettes are going to be running, and so too are the Heart Seekers. They're all very, very fast, although I do kind of get tethered back into combat there, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now, back in the middle, Scarbrand is battling against, I believe, Seekers of Slanesh, which are the anti-large variant. No, they're the armor piercing. I'm getting some okay damage. We also do break the Corn Warriors. And Scarbrand's a little bit surrounded here, potentially. I do have my Chaos Furies, which were able to defeat the Cornate ones, because the Corn ones were already damaged. And this is the summon from the Herald of Slanesh on the Chariot. So what's really also quite crazy about the Champions of the Dark Prince here on Domination Mode is the ability to get crazy reinforcements on the battlefield because other armies are much slower to get there, but you reinforce so quickly. So nice Corn Dog play right here. Corn Dogs are picking on the Hellstriders of Slanesh and the Skull Cannon and Scarbrand the Exile charging in with his giant axe just looking like an absolute thug. And man, oh man, he is a terrifying Lord to fight. Look at him just thumping across the battlefield here. And currently up to 741 weapon strength. If he is able to catch me, it's going to be a bad day. Now, Demonettes have moved in to fight the dual weapon warriors. And they might be able to trade okay, even though they're super damaged. But they do have, well, 600 value so far. Not bad, considering. But the Corn Warriors are pushing me back. I'm just trying to secure the center. And now, I had done a little bit more damage to my opponent. You guys can't see it, but I had about 2,000 value on him. So the idea was to go for the triple cap now. And then just try and use my mobility to hammer him from getting the objectives back. Because obviously, I think he's more than capable of it. Scarbrand is a much better fighter, but I just need to Alpha Strike. So you can see a lot of his armies over here, right? Like Hounds and different units like that. Scarbrand's over here. And we're just able to kind of mobilize super quickly and just go after the weaker links in the army, which is such a fun and intense playstyle for sure. So the Flesh Hounds of Corn are slightly poisoned. Corn looks like they're going to be getting their bearings here. The Motorcycle Man fighting in the shadows against the Heart Seekers of Slanesh, who are very, very elite. And what are they getting right now? So taking a look here, okay, so they're getting how much extra? 5% extra armor piercing and 4 melee attack from having like low leadership units nearby. The Wavering Flesh Hounds of Corn, of course, helps. And honestly, not a bad trade for me. Now, Farmbrand the Exiled, looking like he wants to move in. And with Slanesh, what I would recommend for you guys who are playing Domination Mode is to start off with a bunch of uh, mobile units and then later on bring in your infantry. Although I did start with like one elite infantry unit just to have a little bit of a you know, kind of poke against halberds because what I was expecting from Corn actually was halberd spam to try and, you know, deal with my cavalry. So that's why I brought in the Exalted Demonettes in the beginning. Now, Heart Seekers fighting to the bitter end here. They've accrued about, well, almost paid for themselves, about 1,200 value, give or take. And we do have more and more Hell Striders moving in to flank these guys. And this is pretty good because it's kind of occupying the Cornate forces here, just kind of keeping them busy. But it looks like, yeah, he hasn't quite captured this, I don't think. It looks very, very tight. And I think the Cultists of Corn summon some Blood Letters here, but we do actually get in and break the Chaos Warhounds, and maybe the Skull Cannon will fall as well. We have a very good stranglehold on the other two objectives. Corn can't really send a mobile unit over here, because if they do, you know, I'll swarm them so quickly with my cavalry. So they kind of have to play a more consolidated playstyle. And really, that is the tale of the tape against uh, Slanesh. You have to keep your army together and play more conservatively. So the Skull Cannon here, 
getting blasted by the Seekers of Slanesh with their amazing armor piercing, and also we do have some uh, some big anti-large cap here. But Scarbrand, or Farmbrand the Exiled here, is able to get a beautiful Rampage. So he rampages all my units here, and you can see these Slaneshi demons are just getting melted by the Coronate Warriors and the Furies as they move across a big Farmbrand and getting some uh, juicy, juicy value. So as far as his weapons rank, he's poisoned. So we'll see in about a couple seconds what it's up to, but I would imagine it's pretty good. Now, this objective is being taken by the Corn Dogs. Looks like they will be capturing that. And here, we were able to isolate several Corn Units. So we found the Warriors and uh, some Flesh Hounds, and we got a big surround on them. So we hammered them in the front with the Spears. And then in the back, the big Slaneshi back door is a move in and just hammer into those Hounds. Nasty damage. The Chaos Warriors are just barely holding it. I don't know how much longer they'll be able to hold for. We'll have to see as there's going to be another summon coming in of Chaos Furies. And the whole idea was to use them to uh, block up the corn reinforcements here to keep them from getting to this fight, which I think we were decisively winning here. The Horn of Corn is active. We do have some more uh, corn warriors, but Seekers of Slanesh with their armor piercing get in. They get surrounded by Hellstriders. Suddenly, these bad boys are surrounded, just showing how insane the Slanesh mobility is on this game mode. So incredibly powerful. And the corn warriors are going to melt pretty quick. Now we have the double charge bonus on our flanking unit here. They're losing models very, very quickly, and we're taking very little damage on the return. Seekers are taking a tiny bit, but for the most part, it's pretty cost effective for us here. So, Seekers moving across, Hellstriders, as well as Demonettes, which are still alive, I think, or those might have been basic Demonettes. But Scarbrand is trying to get there, but they're holding the one objective, and now we're getting a pretty substantial lead on them as we do grind through these Chaos Warriors. Here, the Fascination is active. Fascination is one of Slanesh's army abilities. So Slanesh has three army abilities. One is Fascination, which basically does, like, you know, Mortis Engine type, not Mortis Engine, but, like, Abuna type effect. Uh, their second one is Narcissism, which is a snare. And their third ability is uh, a buff for your entire army, which gives you speed and vigor. So you can just, like, fly even faster, which is very cool. So Korn has summoned in a second... Bloodthirster, very interesting here. The Bloodthirster, of course, is going to be pretty good against all my large cavalry, and he's pretty resilient himself, and teamed up with Scarbrand could be pretty problematic. But the cool thing is we can just kite him. We have the two objectives, we have a pretty massive lead, so we can just play that game. And you can see how using the mobility can really dictate the various kind of uh, points of the battle. And I am also summoning in three Marauders of Slanesh. So seeing that he brought like a big expensive SEM for fighting, uh, I know he's not going to be able to play the objective super well. And the Marauders of Slanesh, which look really, really cool, by the way. If you haven't seen them, check out these bad boys. Yeah, super awesome. They just have the longer spear arms, are going to be getting on the objective most likely, and probably taking that from the Cornate Forces. And if they do go over there, their entire army is large, right? They have like a big demon, some other units. But we're just continuing to kind of surround and hammer these guys. Seekers of Slanesh, Demonettes. You have a big flank charge that's going to be coming in from these Hellstriders in a minute. My Chariot Lord is just kind of cackling somewhere. I honestly don't even know where it is, but... Corn might win this fight here, but you can't just win by sitting in this one spot. You gotta get on those objectives, but again, it's probably too late at this point. As the Slaneshi Heretics charge in, a big surround, a lot of anti-large on these guys. Will be very good against Corn Dogs, and even more and more Slaneshi units are going to be reinforcing. While the Bloodthirsters do get worn down, and my Herald of Slaneshi is going to be trolling up at the high ground, just chasing off routing units, those Blood Letters with the Pendulum. And the objective is going to be taken for sure. So obviously these dual weapon warriors will typically massacre your marauders pretty badly. But we should be able to just get sheer numbers and take this objective. So if you're like playing Skaven, for example, in this game mode, you would be able to take a bunch of Skaven slaves and clan rats and really, really grab those objectives. So here in the twilight of the battle, the great demon fights, but is surrounded by all of these units. Poison is active as it cleaves through. But the 400 weapon strength certainly not going to be enough. And he probably would eventually die in this blob because of all the anti-large and armor piercing that is present here. And it looks like there are going to be some corny forces coming in. So we do use the Fascination Army ability to rampage them here. And the Seekers of Slanesh will make very, very quick work of these demons. I believe they do magic damage and poison, so they circumvent the physical resist. And you can see the shock damage of Slanesh units is just insane. So that'll be it. GG well played to the forces of corn as they are surrounded and dragged down by the champions of the Dark Prince. Certainly a very fun game. Really enjoyed Slanesh there. Uh, the mobility is just so fun. It's, it's intoxicating, having all that power and being able to fly everywhere. But you can die instantly if you're not careful. There will certainly be some replays coming up soon of you guys seeing Slanesh getting hammered, as well as hammering people. And it's typically like that. Most Slanesh games are like you really hammer someone or you kind of just get hammered. It's, it's really fun. Scarbrand was a beast. Couldn't deal with him, really, so we just had to kind of avoid him. But these surrounds on the Chaos Warriors were uh, quite good. We were able to get a ton of value and really mitigate their effectiveness. I think the only Haggard thing was the Skull Cannon. That was, like, just the one weak link. I think if they had had, like, another, like, Halberd unit or some more Flesh Hounds, I could have been in trouble. All right. Take care of yourselves. That is it for now. Hopefully you enjoy this Slaanesh vs. Corn domination battle. And we'll be back with more goodness soon, my friends.